Now it's time to go into our financial 15. So this is a financial 15 segment of our weekly webinar. So for the first uh, a half an hour, we talked about some market updates and some updates from our slot group. And if you'd like to go back and review that webinar, you can find it on our YouTube page, our weekly webinars, uh, under weekly webinars, under the same title as this one. Um, and then this financial 15 segment is the, our financial planning topic. So we talk about some uh, really important updates from the Ed Slot Group that has to do with IRA distributions, tax, tax law, tax code changes. Then I do a market update and then we do a financial planning strategy or something important to your plan. And today's financial, uh, financial 15 is the proposed increases to capital gains taxes. Um, so if you haven't already, please hit the like notification and, and subscribe button so that you never miss a new video. And we post one to three videos a week, depending on um, how long I go with these financial 15s, because sometimes they're 15 minutes and sometimes they're a little longer than 15 minutes. So we break it down into smaller segments so that you have uh, a true financial 15. But uh, again, in this section, we're going to talk about proposed increases to capital gains tax rates. So first, I'm going to talk about what is capital gains tax. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull up this sheet here. Now, this is a 2024 tax planning document. You can find that at outofboroughwealth.com. That's outofboroughwealth.com. And you can go to the, um, well, I'm going to show you exactly where you can pull this down. Here we go. Here's our homepage of our website. Now you can see, uh, you can go to education and resources, click down there, go to the slot corner, hit the slot corner, and that's going to take you to um, the page that's dedicated to the Ed Slot Group. And down here, if I'm scrolling down, you can access your free tax planning documents. And that orange, you can see it right there. The orange chart that I'm referring to is right in there. So I hope that's helpful. You can download those easy peasy, as they say. So today we are going to focus on uh, increases of capital gains tax. But first, we're going to talk about what are capital gains tax. So we're talking about long term capital gains or what are called qualified dividends um, right now. And that lives on this side of the chart here. And it's it's a different calculation than marginal tax rates. You know, we hear about these tax brackets for income. Uh, well, currently today, these are different. So what you see here is that if this is based on um, modified adjusted gross income. So if, you're, if your income, if you're married, finally joining, and your income is from zero to $94,050, you actually have a zero capital gains tax rate. If you're single, that's cut in half from zero to $47,025, you're at... Um, zero capital gains tax rate. When you cross over here, 94,051 to 580,750, you're at a 15% capital gains tax rate. So that's anything for long-term capital gains. That's anything um, greater than one year held one year. So if, if I bought the S and P 500, let's say right now, uh, May 21st, 2024, and I sold it next year on May 22nd, uh, 2025, then I would qualify. I would, well, I would have held that for one year. I would sell it. And if I had gains, I would be taxed at capital gains rates, zero, 15 or 20. I'm going to talk about what the asterisks are. If I hold it for a shorter than one year period of time, it's taxed as ordinary income and ordinary income falls in onto this side of it. So it's taxed just like you earn it. Today, we're talking about uh, long-term capital gains and qualified dividends and specifically capital gains. Uh, but these are the long-term capital gains and the qualified dividend rates. So 15% you would pay if your income is here for a married filing jointly couple. Again, if you're just listening to this, it's 94,051 to 580,000, $583,750. If you're single, that um, band, let me just erase this so you can see it. That band is from $47,026 to $518,900. And let's see this again so you can read it. Um, if you're over for a married filing joint uh, uh, couple, um, if you're taxpayers, if you're over $583,750, 
um, you pay a 20% capital gains rate. And for a single filer, if you're over $518,900, then you're at a 20% capital gains rate. Now, what do these asterisks mean? Well, follow me down here. I'll make this a little larger here. We're right here in this box. The, the asterisk says the 15% rate is effectively 18.8% for those subject to the 3.8% Medicare surtax on net investment income. I'll share with you in a moment what that is. The top, and uh, now if you're at 20%, the top rate is effectively 23.8% for those subject to the 3.8% Medicare surtar, surtax on net investment income. So where is the discussion about net invest, investment income? There, here it is. Now, here's the description of net investment income right next to it. The top rate, now we're talking about these rates here, so you can just disregard this. Medicare surtar, surtax on net investment income, those with modified adjusted gross income of thresholds of $250,000 for joint filers and $200,000 for single filers, just like I said over here. All right, good. So you're understanding capital gains tax as it lives today. Anything greater than one year holding period. So again, you buy the S&P 500 today, May 21st, 2024. You hold it until May 22nd, 2025. And any growth that you have, let's say it doubles. You buy, you know, you buy uh, $10,000 worth of the S&P 500. It doubles. And now you have $20,000. Well, depending on what your income is, for the year and how you file, you're either going to pay 0, 15, or 20% plus, and it potentially, maybe, depending on what your income is, your, you know, your modified adjusted gross income, another 3.8%. So that's referred to as a preferable rate because if this growth, this $10,000 that, that you have growth here, if it was all treated as ordinary income, well, then you potentially have a higher rate, right? So you go, you know, you, so let's take 94,000, 94,950. If, if you were earning 94,950, you would be right about here. You know, you'd pay some, some at 10, 12, 22, but that same growth could cost you about, you know, let's say, let's just call it 22%. It's really not, but um, let's just call it 22%, probably closer to 20% with the blended rate which is obviously a lot more than zero. And it's the same with these higher amounts, 94,051 is at 15%. And even if that was just, that was the linear, um, uh, if, if you were earning $94,051, you'd be really close to the 22% here. And, it, and that would still be less than 15, or it'd still be greater than 15%. So that's why they call capital gains rates preferable rates. So 0, 15, or 20, uh, 20%. For a married filer, you can make all the way up to $94,050, $950 without, um, without paying any capital gains tax. And anything over $583,750, you are paying 20, uh, 20% and uh, really 23.8% with the Medicare surcharge. So what are the proposed changes? So that's where we are today. In um, the general explanations of the administration's fiscal year 2025 revenue pr proposals, this is what came out of the White House in, in March, and we've been talking about it, there are several changes to the tax code. We already talked about changes to contributions for Roth IRAs, um, the ability to convert Roth IRAs, and some of the changes around there. Um, today, we're looking specifically at capital gains tax. So I share this with you so you know where to get it. You can grab, you, you can see the, um, the URL right there if you want to go through this 200 and some page, I think it's 250 page documents itself. But if you look on page, this is page 80 of the document, we're looking at tax, tax capital income for higher income earners at ordinary rates. So we're going to talk about what higher income earners are. And I had a discussion with somebody about this. Because they're 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 saying, well, you know, geez, these capital gains rates are really uh, potentially going to be out of control. And listen, folks, this is where I think that the first attack is coming when taxes are going to increase in the future, and we know taxes much must increase. I think this is where the first attack is coming: are these capital gains rates? 
because they are preferable rates, first of all, and they're viewed fundamentally as rates for the rich, right? Because you've got assets to grow outside of your IRAs. We're talking about non-qualified, right? Not, not IRA assets, things that grow outside of traditional IRAs or Roth IRAs. Um, you don't get capital gains tax treatment in traditional IRAs or Roth IRAs. We're talking about things that are in that taxable bucket. And that's seen as kind of a wealthy person's problem, right? That $10,000 growth, hey, why not just tax it as ordinary income instead of giving preferred tax rates? So I looked at this the first time and I said, well, listen, somebody has to have a million dollars in this proposal, uh, $1 million um, for this to occur. But listen, if you sell a business, have a significant bonus, uh, especially if you sell a business, you know, you could, you could spend some business owners spend years and years and years developing a business. They don't, sometimes they don't save money in 401ks or IRAs or, or, or taxable accounts. They're really, they're really counting on the value of this business. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can do to moderate the capital gains rates around the sale of that business. But this might completely, this kind of proposal could completely wipe that away and have it taxed at ordinary income. Um, so, you know, again, I think that the capital gains tax is probably the first target to be, um, to be attacked, not, not marginal tax rates, but capital gains tax rates. So what's the proposal? Read with me here. Long-term capital gains and qualified dividends of taxpayers with taxable income of more than $1 million will be taxed at ordinary rates with 37% being the, the highest rate today. Now, it gets a little worse than that. Remember, right now we're talking that the highest rate is 23.8%. They're saying that, well, if you make a million dollars, you're going to be taxed at ordinary income tax rate. Now it reads the proposal and um, and and it does go on to say 40.8 percent, including the net investment income tax. So remember that's 37 plus 3.8. But again, it doesn't end there. We have got to go to the footnotes, right? Pay attention to that footnote. The proposal and here's another footnote 18. The proposal would only apply to the extent the taxpayer's taxable income ex exceeds one million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars for married filing uh, separately. Index for inflation after 2024. So it'll go up a little bit after 2024. Uh, the proposal would be effective for gains required to be recognized and for dividends received on or after the, um, the, uh, the date of the enactment. So not only capital gains, but also dividends would be, would be if you make over this amount, $1 million, would be taxed at ordinary income tax rates. Now I know, and this was part of the discussion. So we're talking about, you know, sale of a business, big, big bonus. But the thing that concerns me about these proposals is that it typically starts very high and then creeps down. So could this land at a $400,000 number and affect many more people? I just don't know the answer to that. Um, the proposal would be effective for gains uh, required to be recognized, and I read that already, and for dividends received on or after the date of the enactment. So before I move on, let's go to these footnotes because that is the rates, right? Now remember, big change from that, those preferable rates up here that I explained to you. Whoops, where'd that go? These preferable rates over here, now if you make greater than $1 million, it doesn't matter you're into these brackets here, which are much, it's you, you get taxed much higher at much lower levels. And of course, there's many more, you know, there's many more um, uh, brackets involved in here. So instead of you topping out at 23.8, you could go all the way up to 37%. Um, but again, it gets worse than that. Let's go to the footnotes. So here's the fir first footnote, 18. A separate proposal would first raise the top ordinary rate to 39.6. So up top there, they referred to 37%. Well, that's actually not the case because there's a separate proposal in this document that um, would first raise the top ordinary rate to 39.6. And that takes us to 43.4%, including the net investment income. So now we're up to 43.4% for um, capital gains tax instead of 23.8. Right. Currently, it's 23.8 is the top. So now we're at 43.4. Now, an additional proposal would increase the net invest investment income tax by 1.2 percent points above 4 
um, 1.2 percentage points above $400,000. There's a $400,000 number, bringing the marginal net investment income tax rate to 5% for investment income above the $400,000 threshold. Together, the proposals would increase the top marginal rate on long-term capital gains and qualified dividends to 44.6%. 44.6% from 23.8. Now we're at 44.6. So I'm going to say this quite a few times. Do I think this proposal is going to go through? Well, probably not. But I want you to see what is being talked about in Washington. And we are going to see some changes, significant changes to capital gains, as I said, probably before marginal income tax, uh, marginal uh, tax brackets. 